Congress. I'm joined now by one of those opposed to the Obama administration's plan, Democratic Congressman Alan Grayson from Florida. Welcome, Congressman Grayson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Why do you oppose intervention in Syria? I oppose it because it's not our responsibility. It won't do any good. It's expensive and it's dangerous. In a press conference in Sweden today, uh, President Obama said that the United States needs to attack Syria to deter other countries from acting with impunity. Here's a little 20 second clip. I do think that we have to act. Because if we don't, we are effectively saying that even though we may condemn it and issue resolutions and so forth and so on, uh, somebody who is not shamed by resolutions can continue to act with impunity. Now, I would buy that if the, if the we he was talking about was the United Nations, but the United States? What are your thoughts on that? Well, listen, uh, we heard the same arguments during the Vietnam War. What the president's referring to is some kind of bizarre variant on the domino theory. We can call it the bombino theory these days. If we just bomb enough countries, then other countries won't do anything bad. It's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. And this particular attack is more likely to do something bad than something good. Uh, it's not going to depose the dictator. It's not going to change the government. It's not going to end the civil war. It won't even prevent the Syrian military from using poison gas in the future. People scratch their heads and say, what's the point? And when you think about all the different ways this can go awry, including lead to a re leading to a regional war or another war involving U.S. troops, it's simply not worth it. So how did we get here? I mean, you do, what's, what's your understanding of the rationale? When did, uh, for example, when did the United States become the policeman for the world? Well, I, I think a lot of people feel otherwise. A lot of people feel that the United States should not be the policeman for the world, should not be the judge, the jury, and the executioner for the world. The proper course of conduct here would be to take this matter before international bodies. The reason why the, the, uh, the Obama administration is reluctant to do that is because it knows it will lose. It will lose its argument that the United Nations will lose its argument at NATO. It will lose its argument for the Arab League. And therefore, it's leading us to the very vulnerable position of acting alone, which is clearly a violation of the UN Charter. There's no authorization in international law for the United States to simply go off and bomb someone just because we think they've done something wrong. And the people just don't want it. I mean, now I've heard from both Democrats and Republicans that the emails and phone calls and letters that are coming into their offices are running more than 100 to 1 against military attacks, against military intervention. The only people who really want this are the military industrial complex and the warmongers. And I think they're both heading for defeat. One of the groups you didn't mention in the, in the list, the United Nations, NATO, and so on, was the International Criminal Court at The Hague. What would you think about trying to bring an action against Assad there? I'm in favor of it. And the interesting thing is that the, when the administration keeps citing the Convention Against Chemical Weapons, trying to enforce that convention against Syria, even though Syria never signed it, and you can't enforce treaties or conventions against parties that never signed it, if you actually look at that convention, look at Article 12, what it says is that the enforcement mechanism is, in fact, the International Court at The Hague. You take these people to court. You, you hang them up. You, you hold them up to world ridicule and ultimately punishment. You don't simply go off and bomb them. Yeah. And, and uh, do, you, do you think that enough members of Congress, you were talking about, you know, 100 to 1 against in terms of emails and, and, and calls and things, do you think enough members of Congress are going to say no, that this is going to fail? And if it does, what's your sense of what's next? Well, what's next is, is what usually happens, which is diplomatic means to end conflict. Uh, that's, that's what normally happens, and what we're seeing here is an effort to depart from that norm. But to answer your initial question, I think the answer is yes. I think the president will have to, to, to work hard to get even half of the Democratic votes in the House and may not get it. And I think that the Republicans are completely a lost cause to him. I wouldn't be surprised if you see the Republicans voting three or even four to one against uh, this resolution in the House, regardless of the fact that their own uh, leaders, uh, Boehner and Cantor, seem to be in favor of it. Congressman Alan Grayson, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Pleasure. Thank you, too. Great to see you again.